Welcome back to Turning Hard Times to Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really pleased to have Ian Clausen with me once again. It was just two weeks ago that we spoke to Ian about another company that he heads up, that being Grand Partage. It's a, a very exciting story in Alaska. But today, uh, we want to talk to Ian about GMV Minerals, uh, which company he serves uh, as president and CEO. Uh, welcome, Ian, and thanks for joining me again. Thanks, Jay. Great to be here. Great to have you with me, uh, especially to talk about a company that I think very few people are paying much attention to, GMV Minerals. Uh, I have you with uh, 42.7 million shares out, um, 28 to 29 cents in Canadian money. I guess that would give it, what, a 12, 13, 14 million market cap in Canadian money, something like that. Um, so um, it's, it's, a, it's a baby, really. Uh, but you've had some considerable success in exploring and developing your Mexican hat project in south, really southeastern Arizona, not, not all that far from the Mexican border. Can you provide some background regarding GMV Minerals and, and how it happened, uh, how, how GMV happened to obtain the project? Yeah, by all means, Jay. Uh, maybe it makes some sense just to let your listeners know that we, uh, we currently trade uh, on the uh, TSX Venture under the symbol GMV. Uh, mm-hmm. And for our American friends, we also trade on the OTC QB under the symbol GMVMF. Uh, as you point out, uh, our focus is entirely on the Mexican Hat Gold Project uh, in southeast Arizona. Uh, some, some sort of corporate context. Uh, we have about 54 million shares now issued, 850 shareholders. Seven of those are very large shareholders that own three to five million shares. Uh, management and its advisors are deeply committed to this project. We own about 12 million shares, and uh, we've got uh, a number of warrants that are currently in the money, which, when exercised, will certainly enhance our treasury. Th- this project is one that we've been watching for a number of years. Um, it used to be, it was formerly, you know, a, a project by Placer Dome, a uh, large company in its day. Um, they made the discovery in the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, their field geologists wanted to continue to expand the project, but as often uh, is the case, the head office uh, chooses uh, uh, to do uh, a, di- a different direction. Um, mm-hmm. So the project was held since then in a number of different hands uh, in a fractional way uh, until we came along and were able to acquire all the land position that was available, which is about 5,000 acres, uh, and make up what, what is the Mexican Hat uh, Gold Project today. It's a, okay. a low-sulfidation structurally controlled epithermal gold deposit. It's not high grade, which is maybe why a lot of people don't know about us, um, but it is uh, a very consistent uh, in, in its generation of gold within the, uh, the drill core. And uh, it might be a little bit boring, but as we get to our uh, revised PEA, I, I think we'll certainly be turning a few heads with, uh, uh, despite it being uh, uh, a low grade project, it, it could potentially very much be a moneymaker. Yeah, I mean, one of the keys here is the uh, is the metallurgy, and I know our, um, our mutual friend Eric Coffin first brought this story to my attention, uh, and, and that was what he was pointing out. That you know, it's not the grades; it's it's a, what's the cost of getting the gold out of the ground and producing it. Uh, and you have had a you had a January two thousand nineteen PEA preliminary economic assessment. Uh, how and and you mentioned that you've got another one coming. How might the two differ? Yeah. I mean, maybe give us a little bit of an idea of the, of the previous one uh, and what you might expect. Um, I know you can't say too much about it, but what you might expect uh, with, the, uh, with the updated PEA. Yeah, well, but by all means. I mean, these, these are third-party independent reports, and sure. you, know, you, you get a, a very uh, superb uh, inside look at what your deposit might do after they run it through you know, some fairly extensive filters. Uh, you know, the vast majority of projects don't make it past the PEA stage. The, the PEA that we received uh, in, in early 2019, uh, you know, nothing wrong with the document. Uh, uh, you know, they recommended a two-stage open circuit, 15,000 ton a day on a conventional heap leach pad, a mine life of five years but open to expansion, uh, decent mine head grade, low strip ratio of 2.8, um, uh, you know, approximately 470,000 ounces recoverable in the plan, but again, open to expansion. Uh, not a bad place overall, but we felt mm-hmm. that the CapEx was too high and that the mine life itself of only five years wouldn't lend itself to conventional financing methods. So we, we knew there were ways to improve it. 
Uh, we engaged Samuel Engineering along with uh, Golder and Respect and Tierra Group uh, to put together a new PEA for us with a different approach and a different focus. And uh, plus, in 2019, we filled in 11 holes of drilling uh, where our resource had some gaps that it wasn't previously mm-hmm. drilled and was previously characterized as waste. But uh, 11 of, uh, of uh, actually it was 12 holes, but 11 of the 12 uh, intercepted mineralization above our cutoff. And so all of a sudden, what used to be waste is now ore. Mm. And uh, that's, that's filled in an important piece uh, to the resource calculation, which was updated by TetraTech. Uh, and we'll go into this PEA. The the revised PEA, uh, as it were, uh, will be in our hands this week in draft form, and uh, we should have all of the highlights out in the news release of seven to ten days from the time we receive it. Oh, good. All right. And I noticed that I think the IRR was a 33% payback in two years uh, with $1,300 gold. You, you mentioned, uh, so I, I guess you're expecting a larger resource now. And is that uh, that's because of a lot of that infill drilling as well as a higher gold price, perhaps? Yeah, you, well, you've nailed it. Uh, I mean, what what we didn't uh, uh, we will have a, a certainly a, a higher resource going into this PEA. Um, I think you'll see that the that we'll still have a crushing circuit with two stages. There'll still be no need for agglomeration. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you'll see our mine life expanded significantly beyond the five year mark. And, uh, you know, that's not relying on any future drilling. That's what we have right now. So we believe that the CapEx will be greatly uh, uh, enhanced uh, from, from where it was. We also believe that our net present value after tax and our internal rate uh, of return calculation, uh, which you've mentioned at the outset, uh, will be enhanced as well. So uh, we're really looking forward to getting this report in our hands. We've directionally had some, some real comfort with what we're seeing, and uh, because the you know, the fact that gold really has broken out this year, uh, we will see a higher base case, which will improve not only our deposit, but everyone else's around the world. So it, it's a good time to be in this business. And uh, in in terms of moving this forward, uh, okay, the PEA, where do you expect to take it after that? Yeah, so uh, uh, we should be fully disclosed on our PEA at some point mm-hmm. by the end of uh, this calendar month. Uh, the next six to six to eight months, if you will, um, is to uh, make sure people understand that uh, we've got, uh, you know, a very sizable net present value on an asset in a really safe jurisdiction in a mining-friendly state. Uh, this is a company that's only spent $5 million on this asset since acquiring mm. it, and, and I think, uh, you know, we've done a, a really heck of a job uh, being able to build value, which we will then turn into shareholder value and an appreciation once people can see the, the growth that we've put to it. Beyond that, um, we know uh, that to the north of our, our deposit and to the southeast, the same contained structures exist. And so we're going to do a 12 to 15 hole drill program into those two areas where one, we hope we find the feeder source to the Mexican hat deposit itself, but two, to really add some new tons and ounces beyond what we've already got as a sizable program over a number of years um, that will we'll continue to add shareholder value. So you're looking uh, to expand, continue to expand the resource, uh, show that it's economic at these levels. Uh, uh, maybe somebody gets interested in you, or if not, you'll keep on uh, expanding the resource, hope, hopefully making it more robust and, and uh, even better and bigger. And, uh, of course, scale is always important, and I know I think that was one of the reasons that maybe some people weren't weren't all that excited about it initially, but now if you can – really scale this thing up a lot, that, that will start to get people excited about it, I'm, I'm quite sure. Well, that's right. And, 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 you know, when you can, you know, know that you can extract uh, five to 600,000 ounces of gold at today's market value of $1,900, uh, you, you know, you're really looking at a quarter of a billion dollar valuation. And we're currently valued at $11 million U.S. in the marketplace. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, humbly speak, I, I, modestly, I, I would suggest that there's certainly some upside in uh, in being a shareholder of this company going forward. No, I have no doubt about it. That's why I am one, and uh, I think it's very exciting. Are you well-financed for now, Ian? 
Um, we're reasonably well financed. We've certainly got enough money uh, in the treasury to uh, seek out and, and, and complete the milestones that we set uh, for 2020. Uh, we are uh, trading at roughly twice the price of our warrant exercises. So mm-hmm. uh, we're, we're in discussions right now with some of our large shareholders who are exercising their warrants. And that will bring enough money in for us to uh, not only uh, drill the programs to the north and to the southeast that I've mentioned, but also to advance the, the business plan in other areas. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. Um, it looks like you're pretty much on your way then, and uh, we'll certainly be watching carefully uh, and uh, it, with anticipation of uh, some really good news coming out. I do know it seems that uh, it's certainly a great time to be in this business, Uh more often than not, companies, when they go to seek money, to raise money, uh, end up having more offered than they're seeking. I was just making that. It seems like that's very often the case. And so <laughs> you and I can remember times when it wasn't that way, when it, you know nobody was interested at all. Even so, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm told, um, I read Rick Rule last week on the show, and he was talking about how the market capitalization for mining companies in the S&P 500 is only a, like a quarter of what it was uh, during better time, you know, during during peak times in the past. So it seems to me there's an awful lot, uh, a long ways to go in this bull market. And um, you can raise money and um, you can do things now. It's, it's, it's exciting times. Anything else you'd like to say? Uh, I'd like to make sure our listeners are aware of. Well, I, I think we've pretty much summed it up from an overview standpoint, but yeah. uh, I hope your uh, readers can take a moment and, and uh, join us on our website, which is gmvminerals.com. Uh, we know that this project has uh, an awful lot of merit. We're very excited about the detail that we'll be disclosing shortly. So uh, if anyone is interested, all of our contact details are on the website and look forward to sharing uh, more details as we go. Right, and we can look forward uh, maybe within the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, for that updated PEA, possibly. That's right. Yeah, long awaited. Uh, uh, it's been, uh, you know, uh, uh, my personality type is not one that enjoys to sit and wait, but uh, uh, <laughs> we're almost at that finish line now from a reporting standpoint, which I think will uh, will give the company a new look going forward. All right. Okay, Ian, well, thank you very much uh, for uh, updating us on this, and we'll look forward to keeping up with uh, the story, certainly in my newsletter and as a personal investor as well. So I want to thank you very much for for being with us today. Wonderful, Jay. Well, thank you for asking me, and uh, stay safe. Oh, we certainly will. Take care. Bye.